One of the more common complaints I hear from spouses is when one of the partners in the marriage talks about being alone in the marriage. These lonely spouses perceive a seemingly invisible barrier with the other spouse. It's a level of communication that they cannot change and they feel somewhat frustrated. This is marriage devotion number one. The title of it is, We Are One in Communication. And so I want to talk about this idea of communication between husband and wife. Hello everyone, Rick Thomas here. We're helping people live effective lives. This is part of a 31-day marriage devotion. I want to begin with the idea of communication because it's one of the more common complaints that I hear. It's one of the more common struggles that a couple will struggle with. In Genesis 2, chapter 2, verses 24 and 25, it says this, Therefore a man shall leave his father and his mother and Hold fast to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. And the man and his wife were both naked and were not ashamed. Two of the things I want to draw out of this text is that they became one flesh. They were one, not two any longer. They were also naked and unashamed, meaning there was vulnerability, there was transparency, there was nothing between them, and that is really an ideal relationship. The deepest and most intimate component in your marriage is uniquely spiritual. And so when you talk about communication, what we're talking about here is a spiritual concept. And while many couples can disconnect in many ways, there is one that is non-negotiable if you intend to love like Christ and His church. And that missing com component, again, talking about communication, is this intimate three-person dynamic between the husband, wife, and God. Go back to the Garden of Eden one more time. That, that was a three-person dynamic husband, wife, and God. The husband and wife were one flesh. They were naked. They were unashamed. They were transparent. They were vulnerable. But God was there. And so your deepest type of communication that you will have is when God is a part of it. Of course, when I'm speaking of communication, I'm not talking necessarily about praying together, going to church together, reading the Bible, or other churchy things. Now, ideally, it would be best if you were doing those things, but some spouses respond to this spiritual disconnect by saying things like, well, we talk about God. We do pray together. We talk about church. Shoot, we go to church. Our kids are involved in the ministries of the church. We are active church goers. I attend the weekly men's meeting. My wife leads her Bible study. It's not that we don't love God and love each other. But what I'm talking about here is not necessarily what a couple or family is doing for their church. Did you know that some of the busiest church people can be some of the most disgruntled and lonely people in their marriages? The biblical term for what is lacking in this kind of marriage is koinonia. It's a big fancy Greek word, I understand that. But koinonia, and maybe you can even hear the word communication in that word koinonia because that is where the word communication comes from. Koinonia means communication. You could say community. It also means participation. It means fellowship. And so koinonia is that three-person community, God, husband, and wife, and it represents the most profound possible intimacy that a man and woman can experience in their marriage. Now, true koinonia can only happen in your marriage. Again, it's a three-person dynamic. And so if you want to have true koinonia, it can only happen when you are sharing your full experience with God, with your spouse. And when I talk about sharing your full experience with God, with your spouse, I'm talking about the good parts of your relationship with the Lord and also the bad parts. And your spouse should be doing the same thing. And so koinonia is sharing your total relationship with God, with your spouse. And that is real community. 
And when I talk about sharing the good and bad of your relationship with God, what I'm saying is that there are some good things in your relationship where you are appropriating the grace of God in your life, and then there are other areas where you just need some work. But you want to be honest about your entire relationship with God, with your spouse. That is real community. It is a free-flowing, dynamic relationship without interruption or hindrance. Now, koinonia will not happen if either one of you is unwilling to be transparent, open, honest, mature, humble, vulnerable, intentional. You remember that verse again, they were naked and unashamed. If those character qualities, transparency, honesty, openness, maturity, humility, vulnerability, intentionality, if they are not present, there is no way that you can enjoy true oneness in your marriage. Three of the more common hindrances in marriage, the thing that will put a barrier up between a husband and a wife, are, not necessarily in this order, but fear, anger, and unforgiveness. You could say that these three things are koinonia killers. Now, with those three killers, koinonia killers in mind, fear, anger, unforgiveness, let me ask you a couple of questions. Do you have fear or are you inhibited when you are alone with your spouse? And so are you afraid of your spouse or is there an inhibition between you and your spouse? Another question is, do you harbor frustration, impatience, or other forms of anger toward your spouse? So I'm talking about fear and anger. What about unforgiveness? A koinonia killer for sure. Are you holding on to unforgiveness because of something your spouse has done in the past? Now, if any of these three things are present in your current marriage, well, then they will kill the koinonia that you could enjoy. Now, I want you to, and I trust that you two can reflect together, and this is what I would like for you to reflect on. If you hope to not be alone in your marriage, you must work through these communication killers. I want you to identify what is hindering you from having this kind of relationship, this three-person dynamic between you, God, and your spouse. What is hindering you from having that kind of relationship? My appeal is for you to begin a process of change so that you can successfully remove anything that is disrupting your conjugal community. And now I have a couple of things I want you to do. That is your reflection. Now here's what I want you to practice. Number one, ask the Lord to give you time and to give you context and to give you courage to discuss the questions that I have already asked you with your spouse. I want you to plan a few consecutive date nights, maybe every Friday night, maybe every Tuesday and Thursday for a few weeks, maybe every Saturday morning. But if you can plan some consecutive date nights or date days or date mornings where you can talk. No dinner, no movie, just you and your spouse, eye to eye, communicating. They were naked and they were unashamed. And so ask the Lord to give you time, context, and courage to discuss the three questions that I have asked. And then number two, will you help me in, and this is what I want you to ask your spouse, will you help me in this? And then I want you to name a specific area of temptation that is in your life. And so husband, will you help me in this specific area temptation in my life. That's what the wife would ask, and that's what the husband would ask the wife. Number three, what is God doing in your life? The good and not so good. Remember, you have a full relationship with God. And so the previous question is a struggle that you're sharing, communicating with your spouse. This question is where you're talking about an evidence of grace, where God is working in your life and you're appropriating His grace. And so you don't want to be negative in all the conversations. You really do want to celebrate God's goodness in your life as you talk about those things in which you struggle. Here's another question. What specific areas do you continue to struggle? And that is a question that both of you can ask each other. Question number five. 
What have you lately read or heard that is helping in your sanctification? This question is just stirring up what God is doing in your life. You have read something, you've heard something, you're mulling over it, you're reflecting upon it, God is illuminating your mind and you're working it out in your heart. Again, you want to share that with your spouse. Number six, how can I serve you in a specific area of sanctification? You name a specific area of sanctification where you want your spouse to help you. And so the question is, how can I serve you, you're asking your spouse this, in a specific area of sanctification in your life? And then finally, number seven, what has God taught you recently? And then the follow-up is, how have you applied it to your life? Now, this entire devotion is in the description of this video. There is a link that will take you to all 31 devotions on our website. And so you can read these questions from the description here in this video. You can read them on our website. And if you would like to talk to us about any of these things pertaining to your marriage, please just ask. We have a free community forum and we would love to chat with you. And of course, if you benefit, benefit from this and think that maybe this is something that some of your friends would benefit from, please send this video to them and have them jump on this devotion with you or they can do it for themselves. It would be great if a small group went through something like this and had these vulnerable, open, honest, transparent conversations. Also, finally, if you do appreciate these videos. Would you subscribe to our YouTube channel? Thank you so much for watching.